What's going on friends and fam? This is Princeton Brown from Sonic Gold Productions and here today I want to go over with you guys some of the mistakes and some of the things I wish I knew years ago when I started my mixing and producer journey uh, but more specifically mixing. So I've been mixing music, producing music for well over a decade now um, and I wanted to make this video for anybody who's been following me, watching maybe some of my mixing tutorials and is just curious um, what are some things that you could do to fast track your growth as a mixing engineer, as a producer, as a music creative. Um, and these are the things that I wish I knew, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago when I started and I would have saved a lot of time and would have been a lot further in my career for sure in terms of you know my skill set etc um, so if that's something that interests you stay tuned for this video for sure as we dive in before I dive into the video I want to um, let you guys know that I have a free resource for you guys um, for anyone who's looking to take their mixing to the next level um, YouTube only does so much but I wanted to build this very specific mini course called six mix finalizers and I'm going to teach you guys six different ways that you can finalize your mixes so that you can have confidence and know exactly when you're complete with your mixes. A lot of the times we work on mixes for hours and hours and a lot of people have trouble finishing and just knowing when they're done. So I want to give you six mixing techniques that you can use at whatever stage in the mix process that you are. If you apply these, your mix will be better off and you'll feel more of a sense of confidence in knowing this is a solid mix and I'm ready to finish it. So you can check that out completely for free. It's a resource available to you guys on my website. Just click the link in the description below um, to take the mini course and check it out. Um, but without further ado, um, let's dive in. So the number one thing that I always recommend to everybody, um, this is the foundation of your studio. And the foundation of your studio is always going to be your computer. And how great your computer is. I can't tell you. I mean, I've met, I've gone through quite a few computers, um, but if I started out with just a very solid computer um, and kept it clean, um, you know, had the malware protection on it, etc. Um, generally, I don't go on the internet too much with my studio computer just to avoid those issues um, of viruses and etc. But have a strong computer um, because this is where all your software is going to be running off of. Um, this is what you're recording into. Um, so generally, I always go for a solid state computer. A solid state meaning that your main hard drive in your laptop or your computer or your desktop computer is a solid state drive. That's going to allow you to have faster read and write times um, for running your program. So your programs are going to run faster, smoother. You're going to boot up your computer faster. Um, it's all around is going to be a much, much smoother experience than having um, all of your programs running off of a, a, a traditional HDD or rotating hard drive. Next thing to that would be your RAM. I would definitely make sure I have at least to, in today's time with the complexity of the software plugins and tools that we have, I would definitely make sure I have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM with the availability to upgrade as well. Very important because um, 16 gigabytes should be well enough for what you're trying to do. And it is a misconception that, you know, more RAM is gonna make your computer faster, et cetera, et cetera. That's not really the case, but you definitely want at least 16 gigabytes of RAM um, for the software and plugins and the tools that we have now. And I would advise people if I was starting it over again, I would advise people to go for a laptop versus a desktop just because production nowadays is so flexible and a lot of the times you may be work you may you may be needing to work at a coffee shop, you may be needing to work at a different studio. It's so easy to take your laptop with you versus having a desktop here that you know in your studio that's just stuck. Um, so for flexibility's sake, I would definitely go with a laptop if I were to start over again. <clears throat> the second most important thing that I would urge anybody in their journey to look at, invest in, pay special attention to, is your studio monitors and your 
studio space. Um, but number one to, to those two things is, is the studio monitors specifically because the sound that you're hearing out of your monitors, how, however good the sound is that you're getting from your studio monitors is your perspective of what you're going to be able to do mixing wise, the decisions that you're going to make, how you're going to be producing your music. Your speakers have such a crucial role and I've gone through different speakers over the years and every time that I've upgraded my speakers I've realized how much of a difference it is making in my mixing. Um, you know my mixes become just continue to translate better and better and better because I'm hearing uh, my mixes the way that they should be heard. Um, so generally you want to go for of the flattest frequency response um, studio monitors possible for the most part. That's just an easy rule of thumb. Um, so you can look at the frequency response charts on different monitors and see which one you like best. Um, generally, if you have a smaller room, you want to go for smaller studio monitors. Um, the only caveat with smaller studio monitors is they have a bit harder time reproducing low end. So just be careful of what studio monitors you choose. If you do choose, you know, your standard like 8 inch monitor um, and you have a very small room, you also, you know, you don't have to crank it super loud. Um, I would definitely generally advise you just to mix pretty low actually and in mono as well for majority of the time um, depending on your room setup. But studio monitors, like invest in studio monitors. Once you get above the... Once you get around the $1,500 range per speaker, um, I think that is a very solid investment, honestly. You're, it, it is a bit of an investment, for sure. Um, you know, $1,500 to $2,000 per speaker. Um, you know, we're looking at four grand total or so, three to four grand total for the speakers that you're using. It is an investment, but it's one that's going to change the game for you um, just because everything that you hear if you can't perceive and hear the music that you're creating or mixing and working on correctly every decision that you are making and all your time spent is not fully justified or is not the best um, is not the most efficient time spent that it could be because what may take you three days to mix just because you're constantly having to, you know, reference your mixes in different places and check things. I know that with these speakers that I have here, I'm good to go. Like, I don't need to refer. I don't need to do a car test necessarily. I don't need to go reference my mixes in all different places. I'm very confident with what I'm hearing here because I have a lot of confidence in my speakers. And there's this saying, you know, like you just, you could buy any speaker. You kind of just have to know it. I agree with that to a degree. You do have to know your speakers, but it makes it tremendously easier when your speakers are actually quality speakers and they are reproducing the sound as it should be reproduced. Um, very transparent, uh, you know, generally a, a pretty flat frequency response. Um, so those are studio monitors. Please, 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 if anything, and you know, for sure, get the laptop or a solid computer, but next to that, studio monitors. And after studio monitors would be just room treatment. You know, you can invest 3, 4K or whatever in studio monitors, but if your room is completely untreated, big red flag. You know, generally, none of us are, you know, highly trained ac acousticians or whatever. You know, we don't do acoustics for a profession. And, you know, your room doesn't need to be treated as like a professional studio per se, because it's not. But we just want to make sure that the sound in the room is fairly tight. So even in my setup, I have panels all around the wall. I mean, you can't see from this angle, but I have panels because I just don't want drywall. If you have drywall, sound is going to be bouncing. It's going to be more echoey, reverby, um, etc. I also have carpeted floors that helps dampen the sound a bit. Um... So generally, you know, you want to dampen sound. You don't want your sound, or you don't want your room to sound like it's sucking the life out of your sound. Like it's so, so dead, but you want it to be very tight sounding. You don't want a lot of reflections, basically. So limit those as much as possible. 
All right, the next thing I have for you guys, and this would be the fourth thing because the studio monitors was the second thing and the um, sound treatment was the third thing. So the fourth thing that I have for you guys is if you really wanna fast track your growth in mixing, please, please, please trust a select few engineers or people around you in your space. Maybe it's online, maybe it's in person, but take a mixing course. Just please like invest the money, take a mixing course because if you spend, you know, I don't know, $300, $500, whatever the course is, it's designed in a way to take you from point A to point B in the most efficient amount of time. That is what you're investing in. Yes, YouTube has a bunch of tutorials um, from everything and anything in the world in regards to mixing. You can learn about so many different techniques, etc. But the question is, should you be learning all of these random techniques or should you really be mastering the basics? To this day, 90, 90 80 to 90% of my mixing is just doing the basics and doing the basics really well. EQ, compression, reverb, simple things. But just knowing how to set those things up and knowing what to listen for um, is very crucial and I think that had I started off with a course um, in my earlier days I would have saved so much time um, learning how to properly EQ how to properly compress things etc um, later on so save yourself a lot of time and just make a simple investment $500 today is not worth years of trial and error and practicing um, that would equate to that same amount of knowledge that you learned within a course, right? So definitely invest in the course. So the fifth thing I have for you is definitely invest, invest in a course, but next to that would be shadow someone in person. Um, the best experiences that I've had that I've learned things and they have stuck with me have been in-person experiences. When I've gone to other studios or other sessions, and I've just seen how other engineers work and seen the processes that they do. A lot of the times I don't even need to ask too many questions because as long as I can see what they're doing on the screen and how it's how the sound is changing or enhancing, you know, I can put two and two together and, and realize, oh, like, you know, what that, that technique or that thing that he did, like, wow, that, that was something. And because I had a physical experience with it where I actually heard the difference in person and I went to that studio session and I saw that engineer in person, in real life, physically, those moments and those lessons have lasted a lifetime, you know, have stuck with me all till now. Simply because I, I've had a real, in, you know, real world experience with it versus, um, you know, just watching a video online. So I'd say for accessibility wise, taking a course, watching a video online um, or a course online is great because it is organized and it's designed with a specific purpose versus YouTube videos. But the next greatest thing to that would be shadow as many producers and engineers as you can as possible. Just pull up and just go to the sessions and just see how they work. And um, you don't have to necessarily be picking at their ear, you know, taking away from their process. Like, let them work in their natural habitat. Let, let them work how they naturally would. Um, just see how they naturally work and just observe. You know, I think that is missing a lot of the times. It's not so easy, depending on where you live, to find certain producers and engineers to shadow. But if you have some of those kind of people wherever you live in, in, in the world, um, who are great at their craft and recognized to be great at their craft, reach out to them and just see if you can get in their rooms as much as possible. All right, the sixth thing that I wish I did um, when I was learning mixing um, years ago is sticking to a tried and true process. So sticking to a mixing process. So I, just like many other people, have gotten caught up with watching YouTube videos and trying to find information because I don't know how to do a certain thing. And we end up learning all these different things, techniques, all these different ways of doing things that we never master a process. And mixing more than anything is not simply 
a trick to get your vocal right or this to get this right or this to get this sound. Although those things are valid in their own right, those are just the icing on the cake. The cake, the main thing is the process. What is your mixing process? There is an actual strategy of things that you should do in a particular order and in a particular manner to help you achieve a proper mix. And when you do these things, you're going to you're going to have a proper mix that is um, done in the most efficient way um, with less time and generally always better sounding. So stick to a proper mixing process. And generally you find these processes, um, you know, by maybe shadowing an engineer. He tells you his process. Otherwise, you're watching a, a, a mixing course and you're going over someone's mixing process that has worked forever. I have one as well that I've teached many, many times. I'm actually updating my course, and I will let you guys know when that course is updated um, because I want to give you my updated process. But follow a strict process and don't deviate from it um, and, until you've mastered it and you're getting consistent, great results with a certain mixing process. So number seven to all of those things is try and practice as much as possible. Um, you know, practice 80% of the time, learn 20%. And when I say learn, that means, you know, watching your course videos or shadowing people. Those are the best things. And if you literally don't have the money or you can't shadow someone, then I guess go on YouTube. But learn 20% of the time, practice 80%. A lot of young engineers think they're looking for the magic bullet to get them proper and good sounding mixes, but they're not realizing that you simply just have to put in the time. Sometimes you simply just have to put in the time, you have to put in the practice. And there's going to be a lot of revelations and realizations that you're going to have when you actually put in that time and practice for yourself. There's nothing like, there's not, there's nothing like realizing that you've learned something when you've practiced it on your own without anyone's guidance and you did it yourself there was no one there to show you all the steps you did it and the only way to achieve that is to practice yourself and it takes hours it takes days it takes months it takes years um and i'm constantly growing myself and every every you know you could basically say every song that i mix for a client etc is practice in itself Although I'm just at a point where I can, you know, command a certain amount of money for my mixes and they're at a professional level or whatever. But we're constantly practicing. And uh, you just have to be able to practice. And if you don't have tracks to practice with, ask your friends like, yo, you got songs you're working on, whatever, send me the stems. Like, I would just love to practice and work on your tracks. How often have you reached out to your peer space and just ask other artists or whoever, you know, send me your tracks. I would love to practice on them. If you like the mix, maybe then we can talk about uh, some kind of conversation. But I really just need to, I really just want to practice and hone in on my skills. Um, do that as much as possible. I wish I practiced more. Um, granted, I was producing, writing, recording my own songs. So a lot of the time in my earlier years... I didn't necessarily have a bunch of clients who were sending me tracks to mix or whatever, but I was practicing a ton, a ton, a ton on my own music. Um, so practice, practice, practice. I can't stress that enough. Number eight, the next thing I have for you is stick to mixing with a few plugins only. I know that we're in a day and age where every other week it seems like a new plugin is, is being released and coming out. Um, you have to realize though that all of these different tools require a learning curve and if you want to master mixing you know get really good at mixing you have to master the basics and to master the basics you need to have a set of tools that you know very well and are going to get you great results and there's no guarantee that any of these newer tools or plugins that are coming out will get you better results than whatever even stock plugins that you have now. It's just about your ear and your knowingness of what to do and when to do it in the mix. It really just comes down to that. So master your 
stock plugins if you have stock plugins just master your simple set of tools don't go out and think that I just need to get this plugin and that plugin and this one's gonna save me and this one's gonna help me no it's not you know it's gonna be another learning curve and the main thing I wish I would have just done was just master a certain set of tools and just kept it pushing from there because at the end of the day not even now when I'm mixing years later I'm still using the most simple tools that I've been using forever and and I'm and I've just mastered them so well I know them so well I know their sonic character their sound everything I don't have to guess there's no I don't have to spend a lot of time you know figuring things out trying different tools etc I know my tools I know you know so I know your tools stick to a simple few and number nine the last thing that may be the overarching thing of this whole entire um, spiel that I got for you guys of, of how you can just fast track your progress as an engineer, as a mixer, um, as a producer. I've said this in other, you know, other ones previously, but stop watching other people. Like, simple as that. Stop watching. Sit down. Practice. Get yourself a course. Focus. Dive in. Um, find yourself a mentor even greater you know in person of course is is, is the best um, just focus and lock in stop watching other people stop going on Instagram seeing how everyone else is doing XYZ um, even comparing yourself and their results to yours just focus on your progress focus on where you're at and practice so as long as you got a good mentor You've taken a, a good course that has a rock solid um, mixing process. You're using a consistent um, set of tools to to mix with this process. You have a good computer. You've invested in good studio monitors for sure. You're listening properly with these good monitors. Lock in, practice, stay focused. It's going to take some time. Everything takes time, but that is the only difference now. Is that it's just going to take some time for you and practice. That's it. It's all it is now so I hope some of these words of wisdom from my experience um, could resonate with some of you guys um, that's the hope and I hope I can help fast track some of your progress um, through these words so if you don't already um, follow me on YouTube Sonic Gold Productions for mixing production um, education content so I have a free resource called six mix finalizers as well that's on my website for you guys I made. Um, it's going to help you finalize your mixes and have more confidence in knowing when your mixes are complete. You could take that completely for free. It's a mini course. The link is in the description below. Um, without further ado, thank you guys again for tuning in. My name is Princeton Brown from Sonic Gold Productions. And, you know, follow us, um, subscribe so you don't miss the next education videos coming out. And I appreciate you guys for watching. Peace. Sonic Gold Productions.